Hello everyone, welcome back to Stradai. In this video, we are going to discuss what blood retinal barriers are. With the name, you can identify or indicate that the blood retinal barriers are the barriers which are present inside the retina and they prevent the retina from the leakage or from the blood. So now we all know that there are two types of barriers in the retina which are outer blood retinal barrier and the inner blood retinal barrier. So we all know that the retina has 10 layers, one is the pigmentary and other 9 are the neurosensory layers of the retina. So we all know that the retina is a transparent structure and the structures with the retina are choroid and sclera. So the outermost structure that is present is sclera, then we have a choroid and then we have the layers of the retina. So retina is in touch with the choroid and we all know that the choroid has three layers out of which one is the choriocapillaries and those choriocapillaries are fenestrated or they have small holes or pores in them. Those pores will allow the blood to leak or to move freely out of them. So we all know that choroid has those choriocapillaries and with choroid there is a layer of the retina which is the transparent structure. So retina is a trans semi-transparent structure that is and that is the most sensitive structure of the eye. So we all know that choroid is with the retina and if the choriocapillaries allow the blood to move freely in it that can also be in contact with the retina and there are most sensitive part in the retina which are the photoreceptors or the pigmentary layer which is the sorry pigmentary uh, pigments which are the road and cones which is the photoreceptor layer which is present with the retinal pigmentary epithelium which is the pigmentary layer. So we have the first layer which is in touch with the choroid is the RPE layer which is the retinal pigmentary epithelium. So how that and I have told you that the pigments that are re, uh, photoreceptors, roads and cones are the most sensitive structures of the retina. So when there is a leakage from the choroid and there is not any a barrier or protection for the retina or retinal photoreceptors what will happen that the blood can move to the photoreceptors and they can damage the surface of retina and the transparency of the retina can be affected so therefore to protect the blood from choroid to move from choroid to the retina there is a second layer which is present be between choroid and pigmentary layer which is the uh, sorry, not its pigmentary layer, it's photoreceptor layer, right? So in the neurosensory retina, we have the layer which is the photoreceptors, which is after the retinal pigmentary epithelium. So the RPE is between the photoreceptors and choroid. So at the level of RPE, retinal pigmented epithelium, there are endothelial cells that have the tight junction or are strictly attached to each other so that the blood may not be allowed to pass from choroid to the uh, neurosensory retina or neurosensory layers of the retina or the photoreceptors that will help the uh, blood or that will protect the retina from the blood and they will not allow the blood to pass from uh, choroid to the retina and this is how the tight junction between the endothelial cells in the retinal pigmented epithelium this tight junction is the outer blood retinal barrier that will not allow or that will protect the photoreceptors by not allowing the blood to move from the choroid or choriocapillaries to the photoreceptor cells. So this is the outer blood retinal barrier which is at the level of retinal pigmented epithelium and it is by the tight junctions of the endothelium cells which is present in the RPE layer, right? So next we have inner blood retinal barrier. So this inner blood retinal barrier is not present at the level of any layer but it is present in the or at the level of capillaries of the retina. So the uh, we have talked about the capillaries of the choroid that were having some pores or fenestration in them due to which those fenestrations allow the blood to move freely in the choroid. So we don't have any uh, fenestration or hole when we talk about the capillaries of the retina. So what I mean is that the capillaries of retina does not have any fenestration and will not allow the blood to move out freely. They will, there is a very tight or strong junction between the cells in the capillaries of the retina that will not allow the blood to move freely or that will not allow the leakage of the blood or, uh, from the capillaries, right? So that, uh, so what I was saying was that at the level of capillaries in the retina, the, there is a tight junction or the endothelium cells are very tightly bound to each other that will not allow the blood to come out of those capillaries. And how that tight junction is formed? There are some specialized cells in the capillaries of the retina which are the parasites that make the endothelium cells of the capillaries of the retina. So they make the endothelium cells and make the tight junction between those endothelium cells. These 
parasites that have made the endothelium cells and have made also the tight junction between them will not allow the blood to come out of the capillaries and it will protect the leakage of the blood from capillaries agar koi leakage hogi so what will happen that it can cause hemorrhages or it can cause leakage of blood into the retina so retina is a semi transparent structure that should be protected from any leakage or blood etc so what happens over here that the uh, the you know blood retinal barrier will protect the retinal tissues from any type of hemorrhage so this is therefore this barrier is the inner blood retinal barrier that will protect the inner retinal surfaces right so outer it was at the level of rpe so that we can protect the photoreceptor cells from the the uh, freely moving blood due to the choreo capillaries fenestration and inner blood retinal barrier protects the inner retinal surfaces from the blood that is coming from the capillaries by the tight junctions of the endothelial cells so this is all about today's lecture in case of any problem or query you can comment in comment section thank you so much